this ridge here this dark line right here that is the highest area pretty much these lines really get really tight right here this ditch coming up I have never been on this spot but there is a buck bed right there and he's there because of that reason everything that walks this valley anywhere from here to here in the daytime their air their wind is going to be sucked up these valleys everything that comes in behind him is going to be blowing right at him so to hunt this deer you know it's tough you got to go in there you got to understand how the wind's going and you got to come in from the side so you're hunting this deer you can't get in, in this valley not without a lot of luck you get the wind blowing this way and that's what we can understand on the hilltops the wind's going to be going straight across as long as you stay out of the thermals so you want to come in from the side you want to sneak in within a hundred yards maybe 150 yards of a bed you've already found and scouted you've also already found the exit trails that deep trail that leaves that bed there'll be two of them for sure maybe sometimes more but most of the time it's only one or two you want to find that deep trail that just comes out of there and you're wanting to have that wind just your scent is going to just barely blow by if you've got a deer bedded here you got a southeast wind this is a deer bed you got a southeast wind going let's say just off we'll make it pretty this time okay Uh oh, something going on. Cancel that one. But you get that. Got a little technical difficulty. But you got to think about that. Alright, there's that wind. Okay. Alright, so the wind's coming here. He's there. If you're here, your wind should blow just this way. Now, that's threading the needle, you know? I mean, and you have to thread the needle. If you're going to kill these big mature bucks that have been hanging around where we've been hunting for the last five years, you got to understand how they work. They know it's safe. They trust their eyes. They've been watching this valley all day. They got the thick cover behind them. They trust their eyes down here, but there's nothing they trust better than their nose. And they're going to have about 100 yards that they feel safe in maybe 150 and that's as far as they're coming in daylight so if you think you can sit up here on this green field that may be here or whatever could be here and kill him well no he's gonna be about right here or maybe right here by the time it gets pitch black dark that's why we have to be right here if you pick this ditch line and we know the thermals are coming up now what happens when the you know we know the bottoms heat up and it makes the heat right the the wind currents rise in the daytime what happens when the uh the sun falls below the trees well that's going to reverse so now the wind currents are going down this hill he's positive this is good and now where my wind was going just by him it's actually being pulled down this ditch beside him. Now you're threading the needle. But when he gets here. That's where I pull the trigger. I'm 100 yards from him. I snuck in there. It took me an hour to walk in. And he's gone. Good hunt. So it's just. It's, it's a lot to think about. Uh, you have to think about the thermals. The thermals are always going to be there. And they're the only thing you can trust. Your wind direction will change daily. The only way to learn your wind direction and where you hunt is to be out there every day. Um, you have to look at this stuff. You have to scout it out. You have to be there and watch how the wind currents go. Um, I actually had some guys off of uh, 
a website up north send me some uh, milkweed pods and I'll take some pictures and put them on here and I've been playing with them you know they, they talk about them you know a lot of people used to puff bottles and this that and the other uh, that's a thing of the past buddy everything you need is free it's called milkweed uh, common milkweed plant uh, I've got some planted here they've been planted for two years and they're not growing uh, it just doesn't like the southern heat I guess but uh, what I have found is is that you know you go in there and uh, you do it after the season and you understand how those winds come if you get a north wind what does the wind do at this tree you know you have to be at a specific tree you have to find that specific tree all right well that's enough of Tuskegee um, now we're gonna go to Talladega now everything I've done in the last two years has been in the actual management area but this is just a small area that I hunt in Talladega for the last 25 years. Uh, one corner of it. I don't hunt it as much anymore. People have uh, uh, they've kind of overrun it. We got you know most of the time when I go to a tree or to a spot I used to hunt, there's you know, cigarettes, wrappers, or beer cans, or I don't know what's going on up there with this, but. Uh, you know, these are areas that I scouted, and uh, they're all good areas. Apologize, the map will be a little slower on this because of a lot of data on it. Uh, the red lines you're seeing here are old clear cuts. Some are old, some are new. Uh, I try to always mark all the clear cuts. Uh, we all know how the clear cuts can be. But I'm going to take you to a particular place I hunt and a place that I hunt that I found because of these tactics. Some of you are going to recognize this. I'm going to turn all these waypoints off. These are all these are all my real stand locations. Places I killed a I killed a monster eight point. I mean nine point right there. Uh, I still got I got that one. I may show you some pictures here. Um, I didn't get it like all the way mounted, but I'm going to have to turn these waypoints off. Uh, but I wanted to just show you. This was a place where I went in off a of wind direction and the way the land was done. Uh, near the terrain. Right, can I see it yet? I need to turn those off too. Uh, and the reason I did it, you know, I, it's a new technique. I've talked to you about this on the site, too. I mean, we're learning together here. And uh, I can show you the things that are working and the things that didn't. You can see how much stuff is going on there. I mean, these are... I got, let's see, tickets. Funnels, tickets. There we go. The rubs are in the way. Grapes are in the way. This place is tore up. That area there. You ought to have seen him. Alright. Uh, let's cut that on too. Okay. So. This is when I knew that I was under the right thing. I had a. South. West wind. And then it swapped to a. 180 degree northwest wind. And I knew that I was in the right spot. Because you think. The way the deer want to bed, they want that wind blowing down. They want to be able, you know, blowing over their back. He wants to be able to look off that hill where he can see. All right, my stand location. Actually, that's the trail of a, two eight points that I watched all year, and a guy shot one of them late in the year that year. But uh, my stand location is right here. This little funnel picture I got is a ditch actually that runs across here very important to why this worked this area here all this red area here is a sure enough pine thicket probably three years old by maybe four to five years old still really thick though real thick good underbrush thick but they can, you can walk and look around in it now if you want to uh, if you notice how close the top of the lines are together I knew that with any kind of south wind 
they're gonna like these chips all right this is thick where my stand was right there with that yellow and the uh, purple stood together is where my stand was at uh, this is heavy 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 in dough bedding and the does love to bed on this point uh, anytime the winds out of the west or northwest they always bed here even the does when it's out of the south or southeast they bed right here they just move around this point as it's out of the, you know out of the south directly or south west you know come down on this point it's always in this one little level here though all within 100 yards they bed and they just back and forth i watched them three years now but uh on the day i'm talking about i've been sitting there it's 9 30 10 o'clock uh, I'd seen three does go in, walk right by me, went in, they went up in this pine thicket. I seen two does actually come out and move up the hill. All right. Then I seen two small bucks that come right out of this deep, deep ravine here, came up right in front of me. Both of them are a year and a half old, eight points, pretty dear. They will be. Well, one of them's dead, but the other one should be. Uh, they went in across here, down this little thing on that thermal area and cut across and then they turned back and jay hooked in the wind had turned this way now they were young and i think they thought they were walking into the wind maybe but okay they were up here somewhere all right so i'm sitting there thinking this day's over i still trust the spot because i know that my wind now my scent is being blown off of this this cliff this way winds out of the northwest it's done swapped so my thoughts were that that morning he would have came in and bedded here because the wind was out of the south he didn't do it i knew about this point here and it's thick uh hard to sneak up on so i'm sitting there and i i i, I start to get down and i get to thinking about it and the rut's about to start it's early years like december 2nd i think December 3rd and uh, so about this time I see that little buck run out runs up the hill I thought he got my wind somehow then I see that other little buck come out and he went across and come behind me and then a, a doe comes out a lone doe by herself young doe early in the season well December comes out and she walks right through here and comes this way starts feeding over i got her on camera this is the the buck i got pictures of on the camera with the uh, snow and out of nowhere i'm watching this doe and i hear just all kind of cane breaking loose and right off of this bedding point where he'd been laying laying waiting because he had the thermals coming up he had the wind coming across the point he was bedding on this tip i went and found the bed he had shifted over to that tip right there so the north wind northwest coming across that tip and he caught sight of that doe and what he did was he dropped through this bottom to get to her quick and he come right through there and i shot him right there shot him at 15 yards with 30 out six the one day i didn't take my bow i took my gun because i just knew something good was going to happen there but the you know the pattern is solid. Uh, they're going to be on these hills. They're going to use the thermals. They're going to use thick cover. They're going to use the wind at their back. Uh, these are the kind of areas I'm looking for. These are the kind of areas I'm hunting. This uh, area here, I mean, it looks great. You see how steep this is? They're going to lay right here in this top one-third of the ridge. Top one-third of that ridge. Uh, it's working, guys. Y'all try it out, man. Give it a shot. Let me know if it works for you. Uh, I know that's a long, drawn-out answer. I talk fast, and uh, I kind of skip some things I want to tell you about. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to get some some real good footage this year. I'm really planning on uh, trying to put filming first this year. I've got a little bit better camera. i got a camera arm this year. Uh, homemade, I made it. I uh, pieced it together from a couple things I bought, and... Some stuff I made. I think it's going to be good, man. Uh, the season's going to be great. The acorns are dropping crazy. If you got any lone 
lone trees out there, good white oaks or red oaks, uh, chestnut oaks. I'm, I'm seeing.